finishing touches on a, on a new boiler system for the Henry Rahr Brewing Company. It stood along Main Street. You live in Vive, know that. Yeah. On the east side of the East River. On Wednesday evening, August, or August 3rd, 1887, the giant copper kettle with a capacity of 100 barrels now contains 70 barrels of water heated to boiling. The giant kettle was surrounded bottom and sides by a sheet iron boiler in which the steam was heating the water. I was adjusting some pipes alongside the hot kettle. Assisting me were several of my employees, John Hebe, George Huber, my oldest son, Frank. I brought along my younger son, Joseph, to hold a lantern. John Beamer, who delivered beer for Rars, had just walked in. Suddenly, unexpectedly, 8.30 p.m., the copper kettle exploded. The pressure tore the, the sheet iron boiler apart. It tore the kettle loose from the dozens of 5 8 by 6 inch steel bolts that held it all firmly together to a heavy timber frame. The pressure was so strong, it drove the bottom of the quarter inch thick copper kettle nearly halfway to the top, and barrels of boiling water cascaded in every direction. Liberated steam rushed to fill the air. The giant kettle crashed to the ground. I was instantly burned from head to toe. A timber struck me on the head and knocked me to the floor, where I received a baptism from hell by the boiling water. And my sons, Frank and Joseph, were terribly scalded and burned. Screams of agony filled the air. John Beamer rushed blindly toward a window, but he fell into a heater pit that now contained two or three feet of boiling water. When he fell in, he screamed, but men heard him and reached in the window and were able to pull him out. John Hebe and George Huber were also terribly burned, managed to stagger out a side door. Four doctors were summoned, did all they could. But by 9 p.m., I had died from my overwhelming injuries. I was 47. By 10 o'clock the next morning, the other five men were dead too. My son Frank was 20 years old. My young son Joseph just turned 16. John Beamer, 28. John, John Beamer, uh, John uh, Hebe was 28. George Heber, John Hebert was 34. And George Huber was a strong young man, managed to walk two blocks home before he died. He was 21. My eternal gratitude goes to Henry Rahr, who did all he could for our widows and, and our, our families. I left a wife and five children, two girls and three young boys. John Beamer, the only other married man, left a wife and two children. Such a terrible loss of life, such an unexpected accident. A cloud of grief settled over the whole community. So Green Bay Mayor Hartung issued a proclamation for Friday that all flags on all public buildings be flown at half-mast, that all businesses in the greater, greater Green Bay area be closed from 9 a.m. to noon. So on Friday morning, there was a general tolling of bells throughout the city, and one procession of five horse-drawn hearses led by the Green Bay Businessmen's Association and the Knights of Labor, I'd been a member of both of them, proceeded from my house slowly to St. John Evangelist Catholic Church, where the five caskets covered with floral tributes were carried into church and placed end to end down the main aisle. The church was packed with mourners. Thousands more stood silently outside and overflowed into the park nearby. A solemn requiem high mass was celebrated for us by by diocesan vicar general Monsignor Kirsten and Father Selbach preached a short but moving homily sermon in French. The other ceremony, the other procession for George was led by the Green Bay Cornet Band and by the Green Bay Fire Department of which George had been a member. And they went to St. Francis Xavier Cathedral where a funeral mass was celebrated for George by Monsignor Freilich. After the church ceremonies, both processions met at the corner of Monroe Avenue and Chicago Streets. And now the entire procession, led by the Cornet Band, Green Bay Fire Department, the six horse-drawn hearses, <coughs> the Businessmen's Association, the Knights of Labor, and over 100 carriages made its way solemnly out here to this cemetery. George Huber was buried in the family plot about 100 yards from here, Lord was. The rest of us, the five of us, including my two dear sons, were buried right here in one giant grave together in death as we had been in life. 
No one knows for certain what caused the accident. Whether it was a blocked valve or a stuck exhaust pipe or a weak spot somewhere. The building wasn't badly damaged. $500 repaired it. $2,000 bought a brand new copper brewing kettle and boiler system and soon Ryer's beer began to flow again into the glasses, mugs and stomachs of thirsty citizens. Well, I want to thank you very much for taking time to come and visit our final resting place. Scripture says, watch and pray. You do not know when your time will come. I bid you a fun good evening. Thank you. Like that. A lot, of people think, a lot of people thought it was vandalism. Yeah, it is not. It symbolizes that our lives were all cut short. Oh. oh. Mm. What an interesting. Isn't that interesting? Oh, interesting. Yeah. interesting. Oh, yeah. They're all sitting down. That's how they And how many are married here? Five. And they're not individual markers for you, five. They're just the one store. That's right. And what does the plaque say? It recites who was born here or who's buried here. It says. Yeah.